Hello from Singapore. I'm Galinda. Today is May the 6th and we have entered day 30th of the circuit breaker period. Rojak may not look very appealing at first. The salad is covered in a dark and sticky sauce and it's a mix of sweet and savory flavor. The word rojak means in Malay electric mix. This dish definitely lives up its name. The ingredients definitely reflect the cultural diversity of Singapore, bringing together different items of vegetables and fruits um, together with a strong flavor into a harmonious, tasty blend. It is a mix of local vegetables, fruits and dough fritters covered in dark, sticky black sauce and garnished with peanuts on top. And the mark for a good rojak lies in its sauce. The sauce or the dressing is made of fermented prawn paste, sugar, lime and chilli. The ingredients are traditionally blanche kangkong, which is um, water spinach, bean sprouts, there you go, bean sprouts, um, crunchy, crunchy raw cucumber, there you go. And Chinese turnip. This is the Chinese turnip. There you go. Sako. And um, mixed with um, dough fritters. It also comes with green mango. Mm -hmm. And pineapples. as well as fried bean curds. This, mmm, and on, on my salad, the top is topped with grilled squid. In fact, nobody actually knows the origin of rojak, but it does resemble the Indonesian gado gado salad. Rojak is also typically sold by Chinese hawkers until the 1980s, rojak sellers used to be found riding a bicycle around the neighborhood. Let's talk about food today. Since most of us are on lockdown, I see on social media some of my friends post um, regularly what they have cooked at home or what they have ordered. Um, it's very exciting for me because I'm a foodie. I just love to eat food and since the circuit breaker I have gained a bit of weight, but hey-ho. Many restaurants have turned to offer either delivery or takeaway to their customers. So um, getting your favorite dish from a local eatery isn't that difficult. While we're most likely very tempted to order whatever heart desires, we still want to make the best choice we can. There are plenty dishes to order, but there are also some dishes we might want to avoid. Today, I'd like to break down the food that we maybe want to reconsider before ordering, no matter what. First, eggs. There are some mornings where we just want a nice fresh pot of coffee and a dish of sunny side up eggs or poached eggs, but delivered to our front door. But this might not be the best choice to make. We forget how badly eggs can smell when they're not made fresh. Plus, it will never taste as good as we hope for. And then there is meatball subs. Meatball subs might be what we're craving for. However, they will never arrive tasting or looking like the way we remembered them. The tomato sauce they use sits in a bucket for a long period of time and the oil rises to the top. They pour the sauce over the meatballs and then melt cheese and then close the sub. When you receive it, it's a soggy, wet, red liquid bottom roll with about 2,300 calories. Well, I'd pass. And then we have steaks. Ah, oh, I'm a steak lover. The bloodier, the better. If we're craving for a juicy, savory, right off the grill steak, I guarantee whatever is going to be delivered will be a disappointment. Have you ever had cold 
or lukewarm steaks. It tastes similar to a flavorless chicken and has a tendency to easily stuff between your teeth. And then there is sweet and sour chicken. If you refrain from ordering sweet and sour chicken, your belly will thank you. It is a complete fat and sugar loaded bomb. The chicken pieces are battered in flour and deep fried in fat. Additionally, the sweet and sour sauce is made from sugar. Although restaurant recipes might slightly vary from each other, one portion of sweet and sour chicken will provide around 14 grams of fat and 13 grams of sugar. And then we have sushi. Here's the sobering fact. 74% of sushi restaurants mislabels their fish. That means the spicy tuna roll may be something totally different. When ordering from a no-name sushi takeout place, we're likely not getting the fish that we thought we were. It is best to order from sushi restaurants that we know. And then we have the curry dishes. Thai curry dishes are usually lamb, chicken or pork. And it's usually from low grade quality meat because it's going to get buried in the sauce anyway. Plus, if you find orange fat globals floating on the top of the sauce, it's never a good sign because that indicates the restaurant prepares the sauce for the whole week and then refrigerates it. And then we have the egg and tuna sandwich. There are two problems with egg and tuna sandwiches. They're usually high in fat because they're loaded with mayonnaise, which can spoil easily if not kept in cool temperatures or eaten right away. Not to mention that they become soggy very quickly and start to smell foul shortly after they've been made. And then we have the Mexican style fast food. While most ingredients that come in the popular Mexican dishes like avocado, cheese, rice, beans are fine in small quantity. However, the calories add up very fast when they're combined together. This is especially true when stuffed in a giant tortilla and smothered in sour cream. The best option is getting a taco type salad with toppings on the side. Next we have cheeseburgers. <sighs> Basically, this one's a risk because the chances are very high that our burger is going to be made of cheap farmed meat and highly processed cheese. It's all very high in calories, sodium, saturated fat, refined carbs, and provides little to no actual vitamins or minerals. So if you're craving for a cheeseburger and want it to be delivered, pay a bit more and get the grass-fed cheeseburger. Rice noodles. When we're in the mood for Asian flair, Rice noodles always seems to be a healthier option. And it's true, they're considered healthier than wheat-made noodles. However, when rice noodles become cold, they are rock hard. Next, we have bacon. Yes, we know, bacon sounds like the perfect topping for anything from pizzas to sandwiches. But when you're ordering in, you're taking a big chance because bacon either arrives half raw with the white fat showing or it's black and it's chopped up and it leaves an aftertaste of burnt. Next we have stuffed crust pizza. Sometimes all we want is a good slice of pizza and we have to admit those stuffed crust pizzas featured in commercials look very delicious but maybe you want to resist the urge to upgrade your crust. Stuffed crusts are high in fat, carbohydrate, and sodium. One slice of stuffed crust pizza without any additional topping contains 13 grams of fat. So choosing a thin crust pizza is a healthier option. And then we have the wraps. Anything that's served in a wrap is a fat bomb. There's no way around it, sadly. Yes, your burrito might be full of proteins and veggies, but once you add the fixings, that's about 700 calories, approximately two meals. Wrapping everything in a big floury tortilla adds another 300 calories, and it will further insult your waistline because there's no way 
your body can burn 1000 calories at once. So it's guaranteed that the most of it will end up in your trouble areas. Next is onion rings. When we order onion rings, we are saliving over the crispy, crunchy onion rings that we remembered. But I guarantee you will be disappointed because by the time it's delivered, most of the deep fried bread has fallen off and you'll be left with mostly wet white onions. Ugh. So these are my not so tasty hidden fat bombs in a delivery bag waiting to explode.